Welcome back everyone to Steam Free to Play Reviews. Today we're going to be playing Takanaria. This is a game that really got my hopes up because I was like, I was thinking it was going to be like a turn based RPG, like a classic RPG kind of thing with a kick ass story and it was just going to be awesome. Um, which I made those assumptions and it's my fault because I didn't like look up the summary or anything and I just kind of like to be. Uh, so pleasantly surprised usually when I go into a game and don't really know what it is outside of like the category This is not that this is not a classic RPG at all. This is a a Small very small exploration game. There's very little to do One of the main appeals to the game is that your character has this amazing ability Where she eats things and she tells you what they taste like and then she has her little monkey friend that uh, walks around with her. So this is the backstory. This is the info. This is probably the most important screen in the game. It gives you the backstory of the two characters. Nothing really on the island. The question marks are um, the Tiki Island people that you can find around the map. And um, there's no point in actually finding them besides filling in these question marks and seeing what their pixels look like. Map on the bottom that you can walk through. This is kind of cool because you can walk through the info screen. That's kind of neat. I don't know why you need the save for because this, this blah, because this game has a solid <laughs> ten minutes of content. Really, if you go through it, unless you're like really trying to hunt down all the ticky people, but it shouldn't take you that long to do it. Like I played around for like 15 minutes, going back and forth, trying to figure out how you actually play the game, and found most of the ticky people. That little thing up there is one of the strange things that you can interact with without sparklies, but there's still no amazing plot that happens with this. Basically, they just say, oh, what is this? And you find out nothing about it, except that they're confused by the Tiki people. They don't even really interact with the Tiki people. You can find them outside of that little bird thing, and they won't interact with them. They just kind of go, like, clear, and I guess that means that you found them, so... There you go. If you want 100% hundred percent this game you gotta find the ticky people there are no achievements which kind of blows because if you spend time on something like this you should at least get some achievements if you go to find all them ticky people there's no ending there's no cutscene at the end or anything like that um, granted this is kind of my fault because the creator did say like um, all these things that there's no objective and it's basically just exploring the world but at the same time, that doesn't make it, just because you explain it doesn't give you a pass that this is a, a pretty bad game. It's not really even a game, it's kind of like a, I don't know what it is. It's a clicking pixel adventure exploration where you don't have any gameplay besides clicking. Or you can use your arrow keys, that's like if you want to spice up your life you can use the arrow keys. But um... I wish they would have had like some kind of backstory because they tell you the sparkly things you can interact with basically tell you that this is a deserted island and the interaction between the characters and it's been deserted for like 50 years. Even in the backstory it says the only thing she knows about the island is from like the internet because it's been so long ago. And this, that guy is freaking the destroyer of, what was this game called, Takaria has to be because he's creepy looking. He has no backstory. He is the one. He is the reason why this place is deserted. And if you go to the bottom of these stairs, you find the most creepy 8-year-old Japanese kid masterpiece. Like, this is probably something that the creator has on the fridge from his kid. I don't know what the Japanese means, but it's pretty terrifying. I'm assuming he is the destroyer of Takario. We're going to call him Steve. Steve the evil Japanese drawing. There you go. There's your backstory for the game. And our heroes are set out to find the Tiki people to defeat Steve, the evil drawing. And over here is a fruit that I could not get to. There's like no way to get to that fruit because you can't jump, you can't do anything. And it's just kind of like a middle finger at you from the game creator, I think. Like everything else in this game, it's just a big old middle, middle, oh, middle finger <laughs> telling you that this game has nothing to do in it. Like, uh... At least the scenery changes at night. So that's cool, like it goes from day to night. That's kinda cool, it makes it a little bit prettier. I wish the music would change. 
because after the 50,000 dun 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 this is one of the better looks in the game, so if you want to admire the pixel art, just go to that cliff, and then you got like the prettiest scene in the game, I think. In my personal opinion, we'll award that prettiest scene in the game. Um, so, yeah, they keep mentioning that this place is deserted, but there's none of these things tell you about the event. If there was an event, or if people just decided to leave, I don't know if it's like a post-apocalyptic world or not, because it doesn't really tell you. There's not enough story. And this is the end of the game. Sorry, there's nothing special here. There's nothing special on this whole island. And she's like, there must be something we can still enjoy. There's nothing. There's nothing in this game. I even had to look at the comments. But this game will get a 3 out of 10. It slightly edges out um, Saya's Awakening for the main purpose that the English in the game is better. Like, it's far superior to Saya's Awakening. Even though Japanese seems to be the main language, I'm assuming, since all the Japanese that doesn't have English and like everywhere there is English there would be Japanese underneath it like for the creepy painting there's Japanese so I'm gonna assume that's the first language but they still had like they had a few errors but it's far superior to Saya's Awakening which is a visual novel which is supposed to excel at like in, like being something to read and another thing is the music track was pretty high it gets repetitive but it's high and at least you're like kind of playing something, you're clicking around at least. Size so Awakening, you're just basically just keep you just keep hitting clicker. I'm, I get to move my mouse in this game, so that's something. We'll give it a 3 out of 10, but uh, thanks for watching. Hopefully we'll get like a full game next time. Um, that's the goal. We're going to find a full, fun, free-to-play game at some point. But yeah, thanks for watching again. Bye!